Welcome back, everyone, to another fantastic episode of Storytime. I'm your host, Patrick King, and I want to give a special shout out to Remy. Remy, I know you're watching. I heard this was your favorite book as of right now. I don't want to be incorrect. It's called Anatole, and it's about a mouse. And that's all I know. I'm excited to read it. So, Remy, this book better be pretty good. I'm you have you have fantastic taste, so I'm assuming that it's going to be excellent. So let's let's get to it. In all France, there was no happier, more contented mouse than Anatole. He lived in a small mouse village near Paris with his dear wife Dachette and their six charming children, Paul and Paulette. Claude and Claudette, Georges and Georgette. Every evening as the sky darkened, the husbands and fathers bicycled along the boulevard toward Paris to find food for their families. Once arrived, they entered people's houses through secret passageways known only to themselves. Annette Toll's partner was usually Gaston. One night, while they were looking for leftovers in someone's kitchen, Anatole heard people in the next room talking about mice. Curious, he crept under the sofa and listened. Oh, those terrible mice, complained a woman. They sneak into my kitchen, they rummage around in my garbage pail, and or pull themselves up to the table and take what is there. Sometimes they even nibble at untasted food. This I must throw away. Heaven knows how dirty their paws are. They are a disgrace to all France, said a man angrily. To be a mouse is to be a villain. Deeply shocked, Anatole ran back to the kitchen. Gaston, we must leave at once. On the way home, Anatole greatly upset, told his friend what had happened. Bah, a mere trifle, scoffed Gaston. People are people and mice are mice. Our loved ones must eat, and our only hunting grounds are people's homes. But I never dreamed they regarded us this way, cried the unhappy Anatole. Is it horrible to feel scorned and unwanted? Where is my self-respect? My pride! My honor! Gaston shrugged his shoulders. Indifferently. Resign yourself, Anatole. Siest la vie. Dachette comforted him. You are so right, Anatole. She said sadly. If only we could give people something in return. But alas, that is impossible. Anatole jumped up and danced Dachette around the room. Impossible, perhaps not. Ma Piet! You have given me a wonderful idea! He sat down at the typewriter and typed 30 or 40 signs that said, Extra. Specially good. Specially good. Good. Not so good. No good. Then he stuck a long pin through each sign and put them all away carefully in his briefcase. Riding to Paris that evening, Anatole said, Gaston, will you feel insulted if I go off alone after this? I have an idea that I must work on in secret. Gaston answered, I am your friend. Yes, c'est bien. A friend is never insulted. A friend has faith. Good luck! When they reached Paris, Anatole left the others and headed toward the business part of town. He parked his bicycle in front of the Val Cheese Factory. He squeezed his small mouse's body easily under the door, not forgetting his briefcase. How heavenly it smelled inside, his sensitive nose stiffed many delicious cheeses. Camembert, Porzot, Bleu, saint Marcel. Rockcliffe for bleh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Apologies, I butchered that. Well, thought Anatole, I 
Mustn't stand here sniffing all night. There's work to be done. He hurried down one dark passageway after another until he found what he was looking for, the cheese-tasting room. It was dimly lit, filled with long wooden tables. On them stood great mounds of cheese of all shapes and sizes. Without further delay, Anatole climbed up on the nearest table. First, he tasted a bit of... Camembert. <laughs> Goodness, how do you pronounce these cheeses? Without further delay, Anatole climbed up on the nearest table. First, he tasted a bit of Camembert. Mmm, couldn't it be better? He opened his briefcase, took out an extra specially good sign, and pinned it on the cheese. The next one tasted much too sharp. He used a not-so-good sign and wrote something on it in pencil. Up and down the long rows of cheeses went Anatole. For hours and hours, sniffing and tasting and pinning on signs. At last his work was finished. Voila! Now the Dwarf Factory will learn a thing or two. Mice are known everywhere as the world's best judges of cheese. And as for myself, I shall bring some home proudly, for I have honorably earned it. Next morning at the factory, there was great excitement. Everyone wondered who had written the strange little signs. In marched Monsieur Duval himself. We'll soon see just how much this senator knows about cheese. He tasted some Roquefort. Touché! Anatole is right. This does need more orange peel. Now listen, all of you. Business has been none too good lately. We'll try making cheese Anatole's way and see what happens. Every night, Anatole left more of his little signs and every day the cheese workers made more changes. Soon business began to boom. The people of France demanded Duval cheese or no cheese at all. Orders poured in so fast that Monsieur Duval enlarged his factory and gave everybody a raise in salary. But he couldn't discover who was leaving the signs. Why doesn't Anatole appear? Monsieur Duval asked his secretary. He deserves to be rewarded. We owe all our good fortune to him. He wrote a little note begging to meet Anatole, but Anatole wrote back that he preferred to remain unknown. Monsieur Duval even had every employee named Anatole come to his office for questioning. But each one denied that he had left the signs. It was no use. The secret remained a secret. Then one afternoon, Monsieur Duval rang for his secretary and dictated a very long letter. That night, Anatole found the letter. My dear Anatole, this letter comes to thank you for all you have done. Our success is due entirely to your wonderful work. I am most eager to meet you in person, but since you prefer to remain unknown, I shall respect your secret. Whoever you are, it is clear that you love cheese greatly. Please help yourself to all the cheese you like, as often as you like. Every night there will be some good French bread left here for you, and chocolate eclairs, and other dainties. How I wish I could reward you more richly, and at all we salute you. From now on we shall think of you fondly as first vice president in charge of cheese tasting. Remember, you are always welcome here. With every good wish for your happiness, your friend Henry Duval. When Duchette saw this letter, she said, No more snooping around in strange people's houses for you. That's finished forever. You are the smartest mouse in the world. Paul and Paulette, Claude and Claudette, and Georges and Georgette climbed up on his chair and hugged him. We are so proud. Our beloved Papa is now a respectable business mouse. The next day, Anatole invited Gaston to be his helper. The old mouse made a very deep bow. Gladly, I will join you. Then he kissed his friend on both cheeks and cried. Viva An Anatole. 
Was he content to sit back and do nothing about our way of life? None that. He is a mouse of action, a mouse of honor, a mouse magnifique. And so it came to pass. Anatole and his partner worked at the factory, side by side in perfect harmony. The secret stayed a secret, always. So if you should ever meet a mouse looking for leftovers, you will know at once that it cannot possibly be Anatole, the happiest, most contented mouse in all of France. Thank you all for watching this episode of Storytime with me, your host, Patrick King. If I pronounced any of these words incorrectly, any of the French words incorrectly, please let me know. I'd love to know how to say them correctly. Uh, thank you, Remy, for watching these. Remy, I miss you dearly. I miss you so much. Um, hi, Remy. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Laurent. Uh, Nicole, thank you for telling me about this book so I can share it with Remy. Read it for Remy. It's just like we're almost at school. Almost. But thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay cool and have a wonderful day.